Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 13. So David stood there among his brothers. Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. I love the way the scripture phrases that from that day on. There was something that touched his life that transformed him. There was something that God did in him that caused him to walk in a new way. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. And when you surrender to the power of God within you. And when you lay your life down and say, God, I want you to take it all and use me for whatever your purpose is. When you do that, there's power that begins to flow through you. I'm talking about such power that demonic beings lose hold on people. I'm talking about such power that drug addictions are broken. I'm talking about such power that mental illness is healed in the minds of those who were tormented. I'm talking about such power that the sick are raised from their sickness. I'm talking about the power for evangelism. I'm talking about a power to live righteous and to live holy. I'm talking about a power to understand the word of God. I'm talking about a power that makes a difference in people's lives around you. The Bible says this in Acts chapter 13. Go there now, Acts 13, 8 through 11. But Alamus the sorcerer, as his name means in Greek, interfered and urged the governor to pay no attention to what Barnabas and Saul said. He was trying to keep the governor from believing. Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he looked the sorcerer in the eyes. I love that. He looked him right in the eye. Then he said, Your son, you son of the devil. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, and the enemy of all that is good, will you never stop perverting the true ways of the Lord? This is interesting because if you look here, there's a little phrase in verse 9 that says, as Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he looked the sorcerer in the eye, in that moment, in the Greek, I don't have time to get into the breakdown of it, but in the Greek, that phrase, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, implies a sudden access to power that was not there before. Sudden access to power. The Holy Spirit within you cannot affect the things around you unless you surrender. Surrender is the key to accessing that power within. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. That means quench, extinguish, snuff out, as in putting out a fire. This power that comes upon your life, God wants to use. There are people sitting in this room who are prophets of God. There are people sitting in this room who are pastors, evangelists, teachers, and even apostles. There's someone watching me online. God called you. As a servant of God, I'm simply here tonight to deliver this message on the fresh anointing. And what I want to do as I'm led by the Holy Spirit is simple. I want to give you this word that you might be stirred and encouraged unto obedience toward God. It's time to stop playing games. Sudden access to power. Wasn't Paul already anointed? Yeah, it was. I can't really explain the dynamics of how it all works. I call it the more paradox. Everything he is is in me, yet I want more of him. And I've had ways of explaining it before, and sometimes it helps people, sometimes it confuses them. All I know is this. God wants to touch your life in a fresh way and use you in ways you've never believed possible. 
people sitting in this room who may doubt that. Who may wonder about their eligibility. Who may wonder if God truly does want to use their life. I'm here to tell you, yes, he does. Every single one of us plays a part in what God is doing in this earth. Now, Jesus paid to produce the anointing. Think about that. Jesus paid the price to produce the anointing. We must pay the price to protect the anointing. He produced it. He paid for it. It's his power, his Holy Spirit. To have that fresh touch, I have to remain undistracted. I have to stay away from the mindset of ministry being a career. I have to stay away from those things that tell me that God called me to elevate me. No, when God anoints a man or a woman, he does not do so to elevate that man or a woman. When God anoints a man or a woman, he does so to anoint his message. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.